Welcome back. We've been shopping again. <laughs> Just can't stop buying stuff at auctions. Um, we got a bunch of uh, welding work ovens. Um, I actually wanted one lot, but uh, it happened that I got three lots. I don't know. I, just, I was just bidding on all of them, and apparently no one else was bidding on them. Uh, but the more interesting thing, that's a record pipe-wise, so wood stand. It was very cheap, I don't know why. Some, there was only one other bidder and he gave up at some point, so I had to have it. And the rest of the rubble, what you can see here, is actually a massive space heater. Uh, look at that. It's a huge space heater, I had to take it apart otherwise um, I couldn't get it into the car. Um, it was spares or repair, that means it's not working. The burner is completely dismantled, I have no idea why. Some Someone tried to fix it and probably didn't know what he was doing. It's just an oil burner. But uh, it's got a lot of power, so we either keep it or flog it, I don't know right now. Uh, yeah. It came with a full tank of diesel as well. so. That gives me 10 pounds back easily, just on diesel. Yeah, so the, the burner is just dismantled. It looks like all the bits are here. The motor is turning, so we'll take it out and have a look what's wrong with the burner. Can't be too much. It's not leaking a little bit, it was stinking like hell. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Uh, there's nothing more on that. Right, let's unload and see what that heater does. So here we got the bottom out, it's at least half full with red diesel, which we're going to pump out and use for the forklift, uh, because we got heating oil kerosene here. Alright, so we set it up for kerosene, uh, we just need to adjust the pressure a little bit or the air, because the calorific value of uh, kerosene is a bit lower, so you need a little bit more fluid going through or less air, otherwise you're running too lean. Okay, uh, let's get the big thing out. So here we have it in its full glory. Uh, apparently there's nothing fundamentally wrong with the burner. It motor runs, ignition ignites. If I turn the switch on. So, all we need to do is refitting the oil pump and see if there's something wrong with the pump but that's not a problem i should have another one and uh, then we just <laughs> give it a try so pump is fitted uh, let's see if we get something out of it the switch oh well Without the power plug, it's not gonna work. So, right, let's see if the pump has some return flow. Because you gotta feed under and and return here. And I'm just checking if the pump is actually some, pumping something. Uh, these Danfoss pumps, they sometimes suffer from. Oh, we get a bit of shit out of here. Stop that there. Uh, there is no fuel coming here, so the pump is pumping, but it might have an issue with the suction side, or they put it on the wrong side. The suction pipe is that one. We got enough diesel there, so it's just a matter of pumping a while. A while should be clocked, or we have an we have an air leak somewhere. That's a possibility. So we know what the problem is. Yeah, um, the suction pipe is completely buried here. You see that? It's coming out everywhere. It's just pumping up the fuel tank, and it's uh, it's coming out everywhere. So we need a new one. Uh, I think I have something. It's just leaking everywhere. That's our problem. And it doesn't suck. Yeah, well, if it sucks air, it's not gonna work. Okay, yeah, there seems to be a bit of margarine in the bottom as well, so probably water. Um, yeah, let's find another pipe. 
I'm pretty sure I have something which fits. You see, it's still coming down here. It's completely perished. These are braided rubber hoses, and uh, they give up at some time. All right, let's find one to unfit it. Well, it's always the same. You think you got something, but it doesn't fit. These are some really oddball sizes fittings here. This is a standard metric compression fitting here, and then that doesn't fit. Not at all. So, um, what we're gonna do is, we use this with the olive from this one, and uh, cut that one off, and use the nut and on this one, which is cut the, cut it off here, and just use a normal piece of fuel pipe. That's the only thing you can do. Is I don't know what that is. It's some something imperial. I'm pretty sure. Let's see what that is. Yeah, it's an imperial thread, and all the hoses I have are actually metric ones. Well, that's what it is. So we got it back together. I don't like this real little bit. It's just such a stupid design. You, you can't take the back out without taking the front thing, everything off. So the hole has to go to the bottom so it clips. Uh, and then it goes this way. Let's put the bolts back in and then hopefully everything is fine. We'll see. You're ready to go. Let's see what happens there. Okay, so the pump is pumping, but it's either empty. I couldn't hear the solenoid at all, so it might be the solenoid is faulty. Happens on these Danfoss pumps every now and then. Uh, we give it one more try. Maybe we should just empty lines but I didn't hear the click of the solenoid so I'll try that again only takes a minute to get the fault space here so oh, the coil mesh is actually fine I just put a meter on the output here to see if there is anything happening and get 60 volts and get 60 volts here That's not enough. Yeah. So we have some electrical gremlin here. Um, so yeah, we have no voltage on the on the coil. The coil resistance is good, it's about two kilo ohms, so that's all good. So for whatever reason, we don't get a. Uh, clearance for the solenoid which goes down here well the wiring seems to be correct this is the solenoid here and the ground is down here and I belt out the coil the wire so that's all good so the possibility is that this is shot because it's it's all cracked God knows what they did with it uh, I think I have another one I'll find one well, as always, I got a bunch of Landis and gear, but no Satronic. So, we'll have a look inside, see what wrong, what's wrong with it. Maybe you can find something. I think this has been badly treated here. Uh, let's have a quick look into it. Maybe we can fix it. At least for now. Uh, we're going to put a proper one on as soon as I can find one. Well, we checked the contacts and everything looks good, but I'm uh, still getting 60 volts and the coil is 230 volt coil. So something is wrong in that uh, controller here. 
um, it's just a bunch of relays but there might be something it's it looks a bit well let's say misused um, there's a bunch of relay contacts down there and yeah if the relay doesn't pull fully it may cause an issue eventually the sequence is normally turn the motor on turn the ignition on and then after a certain time the the coil comes in but it doesn't so i i guess this uh, thing is just faulty all right we need to find one and then we'll come back it looks like the timer function doesn't work uh, so we turn it on wait a little bit and then we'll give it a tap and it all comes but it doesn't it doesn't ignite so something isn't right on that uh, we got oil spray we got everything so the pump is working uh, the motor is working ignition is working but something is wrong with the relay uh, I don't know exactly what but it comes on quite uh, only half or so something isn't quite right there might be some I got a feeling it was open before so we need another one that's all we can do yeah we got plenty of oil spray and everything seems to be fine ah groupie is coming coffee time we'll come back later okay after a bit of searching we found one. this is uh, 832.3 which has a different socket wiring so I had to rewire the socket um, the problem is that the ground is actually I had to take all the ground wires off because the neutral is actually connected directly to the socket so if you use an 832.3 instead of a 974 you need a different base because the base the ground the neutral on the base is directly wired to the terminal here so hopefully that works I just do use the terminal block down there to get the neutrals off that one and let me stick that one on and uh, pray we'll see so now comes the moment of crude let's just plug it in and there we go. Right there. the problem is that they put the magnet wire directly to the motor which is no good okay we're running out of fuel now okay so that's what they did uh, I need to change that wiring because there is a link from the motor directly to the magnet or the, the solenoid valve which is bad but that's how it was wired and I don't know why so uh, let's change that and then we'll find out what's going on here well we finally got it working uh, <coughs> it was definitely the control unit I said before I had to rewire it uh, but it's burning okay. I think I reduced the oil pressure a little bit just to make sure it's not smoking. So let's see how it starts. Come on. Yeah, comes on nicely. Good. Happy with that? Yeah. I think we could, we could probably burn a little bit leaner. Let me get an Allen key and reduce the pressure a little bit. Alright, so it seems to work. Power it on. Takes a bit. It's just got a return line into the canister here, into the cherry can. And uh, so it starts first time, and if you wait a little bit and turn it off, the flame cuts off, but the, the motor keeps on running. That's that little electronic gizmo on the side, which just keeps the motor running. So all we do is just pouring out the fuel here with the return line, and once that bucket is full, we fill the next one because I decided 
to give it away because it's too big for me. Um, yeah, a couple of things, clean it, and then I'll see if someone can use it. All right, that's it from this one. Don't need to show the rest of it. We fixed the major problems, which was the suction line and also the uh, the burner controller. I think someone screwed it up because they tried to open it. It's banged and busted. It doesn't work anymore. So we had an old burner here. I'll we'll just use the bits, and that's that's it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it keeps on running and then after a certain time it stops. It's to pull down the um, ah, the heat gun basically. So it just keeps on flowing. It's still quite warm coming out here because that metal cover here gets hot and at some point it glows. Yeah, it's a massive piece of kit. I think it weighs about 50, 60 kilos. Depends on how much fuel is in the tank. And uh, yeah, it stops after a while when you think everything is cold and that's it. Alright, that's it from this one. No need for showing the rest of it, just cleaning, tidying up stuff and uh, yeah, good to go. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, until next time. Thank <laughs> you.